Now, I've known Dorothy since 2004, and we were allies on a lot of progressive issue fights, fighting for, against fracking and fighting the TPP. And she is very progressive when it comes to um, uh, the issues, but she has a terrible um, way of, of, of once she endorses somebody, being blind to their faults, and then doing what I call dirty fighting uh, against their opponents. And I'm gonna give you some examples. Um, Fran Pavley, uh, uh, I fought Fran Pavley's bill, SB4, um, back in 2013. And that was a bill that would have regulated fracking. Now, first of all, fracking, no amount of regulation is gonna make fracking safe, but this wasn't even a good regulatory bill. It was very weak. Um, there's a whole article about it I can post in the comments that I wrote for Common Dreams. Um, but she got uh, assurances. We were sitting there watching Gasland 2 together and she muttered under her breath, I ought to, she was supporting this bill because she was Fran Pavley's delegate to the California Democratic Party convention. And she was watching this film and she said, I ought to resign as Fran's delegate. And then she goes and talks to Henry Stern, who I am not supporting, um, who was uh, Fran's environmental deputy. And he paved everything over, made, made sure, oh no, this is a good bill, this is a good bill. And so meanwhile, Jerry Brown made Fran Pavley put in these amendments the night before uh, it was voted on by the assembly the LA Times editorialized on it, a fracking bill gone bad. The four sellout big green groups who had sponsored this, all the other green groups were against it, by the way, urged her not to accept these amendments um, and withdraw or withdraw the bill. And she accepted the amendments anyway. They took their name off the bill. And that night, Dorothy Reich with her best buddy, Eric Bauman, who she defended till the end, and we all know about Eric Bauman, was pushing this bad fracking bill to get the endorsement of, of the LA County Democratic Party the very night before the vote and it passed. And as we all know, well, not, we don't all know, but those of us who fight fracking know for the next two years, because of these amendments, we had unregulated fracking and uh, these fracking companies were allowed to ingest, inject toxic fracking wastewater into our aquifers 2,500 times. So this bill was a terrible bill what it did was it gave political cover to oily Democrats or mod Dems, people who take money from uh, oil companies to vote in favor of Fran's bill instead of Holly Mitchell's bill, who I'm gonna be endorsing for supervisor. The existence of Fran's bill gave them political cover for not voting against Holly Mitchell's fracking moratorium bill in the same year, 2013. Then uh she supported ted Lieu, of course and gave him political cover for as we mentioned as i mentioned pri previously him voting against the iran deal oh no no he's never going to vote against the iran deal but of course he did because he's got these jewish constituents in my district cd 33 which by the way if you followed my um live stream of trump's appearance in beverly hills last week as i was going up and down the street interviewing Beverly Hills residents, people who were walking on the street or eating at the restaurants. So many people supported Trump and a lot of people said he was the best for Israel. A lot of these were Iranian Jews. And these are who Ted Lieu's constituents are. He's not even Jewish, <clears throat> but these are the people who vote for him. These are the people who give money to his campaign. So these are the people he's, you know, um, supporting. And um, she, uh, gave political cover to him for his vote against the Iran deal. Then she supported Ben Allen, who I now like. He's my state senator, but at the time there was a lot of negative stuff about him. And Sandra Fluke, who was, um, she is um, a political uh, consultant now, or she's running an organization. She's got a new job. I forget the name of her organization, but she was running for that same seat. And Dorothy did a lot of dirty tricks against her and sent things to her list. She has a list of about 5,000 people that she emails every day. And she runs a Google group. She's ahead of the Santa Monica Mountains, uh, the progressive Democrats of the Santa Monica Mountains. And she's been the head of that. She's like, I call her the president for life, but she's been the head of that for 16 years now. Nobody else ever gets elected. And it's the only organization that has a Google group that she's the only one allowed to post in. So I finally got off that email list because she would just post things as gospel and there was no way for anybody else to rebut her or engage in a dialogue with her. So she sent out a lot of negative stuff about Sandra Fluke. Then when Henry Stern was running for Fran Pavley's seat, 
she posted a lot of personal information about uh, Richard Matthews, who was running against uh, Henry Stern, information that she could only get from being his mortgage broker. And uh, the, she actually got censured from the California Democratic Party for doing that. And then, of course, um, as I mentioned, she was a supporter of Eric Bauman. And we know that we were trying to get SB 562 passed um, a couple of years ago. And Dave Dayen, who's a friend of mine, he was on my show, he's a great reporter, wrote some negative articles about SB 562 and the Nurses Union. And, um, you know, a lot of what he said was true, but it was very unhelpful for our movement to get it passed. And people may know that I organized a protest of the summer resistance tour for, um, for the CDP and the DNC when they were here. This was a couple of years ago. And we protested as we protested them for not supporting uh, Medicare for all. And I went up to Eric Bauman and I said, why, you know, you said we should elect you over Kimberly Ellis because you had relationships in the legislature and you would make sure 562 got passed. So what are you doing to get it out of the rules committee? Because Anthony Rendon held it in the rules committee. And uh, he said, I'm working on it, Lauren. I'm working on it. And then uh, Dorothy sent to her email list. I, I saw the email. She got an email from Eric Bauman, who, by the way, took money from uh, the pharmaceutical industry while he was chair of the um, Los Angeles County Democratic Party uh, to, to try to stop Prop 61, which Bernie Sanders came out here three times. He did three rallies for Prop 61, which would have lowered prescription drug costs for people that were on federal programs here in California. And he was lobbying against that while being an officer of the Democratic Party. So he sent her this email and the only thing was a link to Dave Dian's article and asked her to send it out to her list of 5,000 people. So right there, he was lying if he said he was doing everything he could to get SB 562 out of the Rules Committee when clearly he was uh, trying to sabotage it by circulating this article that was very unfavorable toward. And then the other thing is ever since Dorothy and I, you know, fell out over Fran Pavley's bill, she follows me around whenever we're, we're at a, um, a, a thing and I'm live streaming it. Uh, she follows me around and tells people not to talk to me. I mean, it's so juvenile. When I was running for Bernie Sanders delegate and there were 115 people running and I was the only one in the room that got more than 50% of the vote, this is despite her going around and telling people not to vote for me. Very, very childish. So I'm never going to vote for that woman. And you can do what you want. Maybe those examples that I gave don't bother you, but that's why I'm not voting for her. And that's why I took so long to explain this. I think she's, she's not a, I think she's a pernicious influence in the party. 